Ron Fitzpatrick, Central Point, Oregon, Team G503 Headquarters. The heartbeat of these Jeeps comes out of every hometown garage, just like yours. It's amazing to me what takes place all around the globe. Customers building, maintaining their dreams. Check out this newest video that Janton and the Schiller did in South Carolina. Remember, it is our goal here at Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts to provide you with top quality parts, information, and customer service. Thanks. Hey, I'm here with Janton Barano, Somerville, right. South Carolina. How are you, Janton? Good, we're doing good. What do we got going on here with the well, L134? We've, uh, the blue head gasket. And so uh, last week we took the head off, got everything off, uh, cleaned the head, took the head to a machine shop, have it painted. And so now we're about to put the head back on. Scott's with me today. And uh, we've got some brand new parts from, uh, from Ron up in Oregon. So we're gonna put those on. We've got some studs, some nuts, some gaskets. We're gonna do it right today. Okay, so Jantin's put a little bit of oil. We smear a little bit of oil on the cylinders there just from when we fire it back up. And he's cleaning that top off one last time, the top of the block. Good. It looks dead clean. We just got a little bit of oil on there. That's the trick to these. Everything, just when you think it's clean, clean it again. Clean it again. All right, we're about to put the first stud in. And I'm going to put some uh, thread lock on it here, thread sealer rather. And uh, we just opened this tube up, so hopefully it'll come out. Is it going? There you go. We got it. So just dab it. Yeah. Just so it covers those threads. You want, a, you want a good amount on there. You don't want to over glob it so it comes seeping out the side, but you want to make sure that seals up to the threads on the top of the block. That looks good. Okay, like that? Mm hmm. Right, here we go. You're just going to spin those in by hand, and mm -hmm. I'm not going to use any, put any torque on those yet. They should be able to spin in by hand. So Janton's got this one in, and if you notice here on these studs, there's a little shoulder that's on the bottom, and Janton, we'll take a look here and we'll show them with this one. Right here yep. is where the shoulder is. Right there. And that's where your threads are gonna stop when it goes into the top it's of like the a block. a little bevel at the end. Yes, exactly. Okay, so we've got a bunch of these studs in, and most of them we've just put in by you know, finger tight, but every now and again, you're gonna need a tool to just get that last little bit to the shoulder we showed you. And this is a stud extractor or installer tool. You can get those at the hardware store, and that would be a really good tool to use. If you don't have one of those or can't get one, a little trick that we can do in the garage to just uh, put the studs in is you take the two nuts that go on the top of them, and you can install those on top of one of your studs. We've already got that one down in there, but Jan is going to show you here how to do this. You'll screw that down about a nut's length, mm -hmm. and then you'll put the other one on top. You can back the two together, and then you can use the wrench or your fingers to tighten that up. And you don't want to tighten these real tight. You want to get them down where they meet that shoulder and stop, and you'll feel that happening. You don't want to force that any further. That's just something you can do if you don't have a stud installer or extractor tool. And I guess, Jim, we'll go ahead and put that last one in, and we'll roll forward. All right, so we got the block all clean, got the studs in. So the next step is to take your gasket and to coat it with some copper spray. So that's what we're going to do right now. So you want to get a good coat on here, not so it's running and sagging. If you got to do a couple light coats is what the manufacturer says here in the particular brand that it has. And you've got to let it sit up for a few minutes so it gets tacky. Second coat? Yep, second coat. We flipped it over, waited about 30 seconds. You want everything to look copper like that. Just not letting the uh, copper spray sag or drip. Right. Keep a nice even cut, looks good. Right down there in the bottom. Yeah, see that? Yeah. That looks good, let's do the other side. Okay, so Janton's got all the studs we can put in. And if you notice here, there's two areas here and here. These have been drilled and oversized threads, so the bolts are a little larger. And you could go back in and put a helical in there, but the head has already been uh, drilled out as well to fit the larger bolts. So we're just gonna go ahead and replace those bolts with the size that fits in there, if you're wondering about why those turn out there. But these studs from our pitch magic look real good, and they went real nice. They're all sealed up there, as you see, to the top of the block. Good job, Jan. Thank you, pal. Back up a little bit. 
This feels good. And it's definitely tacky. Jantin's going to put his hands on either side, and hopefully this is going to go slip right on these studs so we don't have an issue installing it. We're using the Felpro head gasket. Does it look like it's going to go right on there? Okay, we had a little jump in filming here because I jumped in and gave Jantin a hand. Sometimes these are a little difficult to go on, not because your studs are in, in wrong order, but right. because you're putting something that's flat and you don't want to crank it, it's hard to get them on all that lined up. So we put two hands to it, and what we did was we had to use a long, uh, deep weld socket, and you can kind of work your way around. But when I did that, I touched the copper spray a little bit. So what we did was we just touched took, it touched it up with a brush, and we'll let that tack it. it. Looks good. This. Made in USA. Made in USA. Look at I that. I love that. That's great. It's looking good so far. Some guys don't use the copper spray. Uh, we think it's a good idea. Now Jan's got his, his head there in his hands and he's gonna try to put this on as level as he can with those studs. And this is where it gets a little difficult because the studs don't always wanna line up perfect, but you wanna get that on their level and then kind of wiggle it back and forth like he's doing there. And this is the difficult part. You don't wanna take a hammer and start beating on that. So you wanna try to do everything you can before you have to resort to that. It doesn't want to go? No. Okay. Shut the camera off. We'll try, yeah. some, we'll, we'll tr we'll try something else. <laughs> okay, since Jan's got this all painted up nice and we don't want to smack on that with a hammer uh, or a block of wood, sometimes you do have to resort to a rubber mallet or a dead blow hammer. But if you're going to do that, very, very slight taps do not beat on this. And the easier way is I'm going to take a cloth here to kind of protect his, his paint work. And you can take your palm or your fist like this and just you can kind of tap and do a little here, come back, do a little here, and you can feel it working its way over the threads. So we're just gonna go back and forth on this a couple of times and see if we can't get that to drop down. These these are a little tight, but I think that at some point someone's done some uh, machining or something. I know there's Healy coils in this and they might not be just dead center, but you see that's gonna work. So we'll just keep at it. All right, we've got it down here now where the studs are starting to poke through the top. And Jan's going to do the honors of driving it home here. And just like I say, back and forth, back and forth works. And he's almost got it there where it's going to be sealed down to the top. At this point, you got to be careful where you hit because you could hit the stud. Yeah. And that did doesn't you, feel did, very good. Did you just learn it the hard way? <laughs> yeah. Okay, the next step we're going to do is we're going to put the oil filter bracket on the front three studs here in the corner. As you see how Jan's got this with the bolts that go to the canister on that side. You can go ahead and install one of the nuts. Boy, you just that thing just went right on there, didn't it? Sure did. Awesome. Doing a great job, Jan. Thank you, pal. So now we got our crossover tube and assembly with our horn there for the carburetor. And it's going to go on the two studs. They're second and third from the rear of the of the head. Okay, there is a definite torque order. We've got the nuts and the, and the bolts that we would use. We are using those two big ones again, like we say, because this has been drilled and tapped. So the order is going to go like this in, in torquing them. It's one, two, three, four is here, five's over here, six is up front here, seven is in the back on the bracket, eight is across here, nine is up here, then we've got 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then 15 up here in the corner. And I will take a picture of a diagram for this because I know I went through that kind of quick, but we're first gonna go and we're gonna torque all these down to 40 foot pounds. And then after we follow the sequence, we're gonna take it up to 60 foot pounds following the same sequence. And look for the picture of the sequence at the end of the video. Okay, Jan's going to number two here and he's got has to use an extension. But he's got this fancy torque wrench you just bought that's digital. fancy. It's bougie. It actually shows you as you go where you're at, and then it'll go, it'll make a sound and go red when you get to the 40 pounds. There it is. That's amazing. Cool tool, Jantin. That's cool. Okay, a little fast forwarding, but there's other videos out there. We didn't want to make this video really long. We've got everything put back together. And again, Jantin's problem from the beginning was he had coolant in his exhaust, came out of exhaust pipe. So we're hoping the head gasket was the issue. 
and uh, got everything back to go. We're getting ready to fire it up. We're expecting a lot of smoke because of the uh, antifreeze in the system there, so we're gonna take it outside the garage. Is that a flood it? No, I don't think it's getting gas yet. Got the choke open. Close it, close, close choke halfway? Yep. Try it now. It wants to go. And guess what? Smoke? No smoke. Dan's got a funky setup here with this Solex carburetor. We'll remedy that someday in the future. Inherited that What's that? I inherited that. You inherited that? I did not do this. <laughs> Sounds good. So what I would suggest now is you take this for a ride around the block. You know, put some, put a few miles on it, get up the temperature, and then uh, check the, check the torque on those bolts again, head bolts. There's your item. Yeah, That's another issue in itself. I'll bet you it's got something to do with that. Okay. All right. So I'm here with Jan. We changed out the head gasket. Everything seems to be okay. There was a lot of coolant in that uh, exhaust system. There's white smoke everywhere, but it seems that it's not pumping out cool like it was anymore. Correct. So I'm thinking, I talked to the boss there, a couple guys, and it's, I guess it's going to smoke for a while until it gets itself out of the system, but I'd call that a success. We're good. All right, man. Well, I'm going to All take right. off now, and uh, we're going to do something about that solar yeah. car over here. <laughs> Thanks, pal. Thank you, Tim. All right, All right. All right signing yeah. off, y'all. Team G503, Scott Schiller with Jantons Jeep. <laughs> Welcome to the club, boss. Thank you. <laughs> Wanted to show you a quick video here of all the smoke that came out of the tailpipe after we changed out the head gasket and got it fired up. It was sitting on the hill there as it got warm, the smoke got worse and worse. There was quite a bit of coolant and such in the exhaust system itself. The engine itself runs pretty well. Uh, there is a little issue there with the Solex carburetor and maybe some valves that need to be adjusted. But all in all, consider today a success. Jenton sent me a video after he'd driven the Jeep around the block about four or five miles, and here it is. Great job, Jenton. Hey Scott, wanted to give you a quick update. Just took it around the neighborhood, uh, maybe uh, four or five miles, something like that. Look at here. Clean as a whip. No smoke. Appreciate your help. Hope everything goes well for you. Take care. Bye.